Hello everyone, Emea Sato here, bringing you the next in my Actually Helpful Tutorial series. In this episode, I'll show you how to start off with Thermal Expansion 3 and how to create an infinite energy loop using a Railcraft steam boiler and a Mine Factory loaded tree farm. The basic materials you're going to need for this project are 142 iron ingots, 90 copper ingots, 6 silver ingots, 14 lead ingots, 23 gold ingots, 2 tin ingots, 2 pulverized iron, 1 pulverized ferrous metal, 6 pulverized gold, 6 pulverized silver, 33 sand, 101 clay, 108 cobblestone, 55 redstone, 6 wood, 3 coal, plus some extra so you can have some starting power to run your machines, 3 gunpowder, 3 blaze powder, and 30 rubber, and 12 emeralds, and 6 sticks. You're going to be using these materials to make 4 redstone furnaces, 1 pulverizer, 1 induction smelter, 1 rolling machine, 6 leadstone energy conduits, just to start off, you don't actually need to make these if you can figure out a way to skip them, 32 redstone energy conduits, 32 opaque fluid ducts. You can make the regular fluid ducts, however they do require more obsidian. 6 steam dynamos, 1 aqueous accumulator, 1 planter, 3 harvesters, 4 emerald upgrades, and 1 full size high pressure boiler. In order to make a high pressure steam boiler, you're first going to need 9 solid fuel fire boxes. You're going to place them on the ground in a 3x3 square, and then you're going to take 36 high pressure boiler tanks and place them on top of the firebox in a 3x3x4 grid. Once the boiler is complete, you'll see the pieces can join together and you can right click on it to see the inventory. Now that we have our boiler, we need to fuel it. A high pressure boiler goes through fuel pretty fast, and it can be problematic if you let it cool down. Here I have a mine factory reloaded tree farm feeding oak into redstone furnaces in order to turn the oak into charcoal. This process should be automated, and as I have shown in previous videos, an ME network can become very useful here. The first thing you'll need to do when making your tree farm is level out a 25 by 25 area. You're going to need a large flat space in order for your planter to place the saplings. The next step is digging a hole two blocks deep and putting your planter at the bottom. You'll need to attach power and whatever automated system you have to your planter while you're doing this. In this case, I'm going to place a precision export bus on the side and tell it to export saplings. And I'm going to place some saplings inside the planter so that I'll be able to see the grid when it's completed. Make sure to place your upgrade inside the planter so that it will cover the full area. We want to dig a short underground tunnel so that we can connect it to whatever automated system we have on the outside of the border. At the edge of the farm we'll want to place our three harvesters and make sure you place a chest behind them. They don't have to be diamond chests, but they need an inventory to output into. On top of these chests, I'm going to put three basic import buses. I'm going to place a controller on the side here and add some power to it. And I'm going to make sure I'm running power to all of my harvesters. I'm going to put an ME chest here and put my storage disk inside, and I'm going to connect my underground cable to my chest. Remember that we set the previous export bus to export the saplings, so it should already be set to do that as soon as we connect it to the chest. We need to make sure we put all the upgrades in our harvesters so that they're reaching across the entire area. And if we take a look here, we can see the harvesters are now working and harvesting the trees in the back. The next step will be putting the wood into our redstone furnaces. On top of the furnaces, I'm going to place some precision export buses, and I'm going to set them to export into the chest behind them. In the configuration UI for the furnaces, blue means input and orange means output. They will automatically output into any adjacent inventory as long as they're set to the proper color. 
I'm going to set each of the export buses to output oak wood. We can see that the furnaces are now filling up with the wood gathered by the harvesters, and when they're finished, they'll place the charcoal back into these chests, which goes into the ME storage drive. The final step for the boiler is filling it with water and our charcoal. I'm going to dig a 4x4 hole, fill it with water, and an aqueous accumulator. On top of the accumulator, I'm going to place one fluid duct running water into the boiler. I'm going to set an export bus and make sure this bus is on the bottom and run it to my network over here. I'm going to configure this precision export bus to output charcoal. Now the network's automatically placing charcoal inside the boiler and it will continue to do this as long as it's getting wood from the tree farm. An important thing to remember with the steam boiler is that if it's not filled with water and it's above 100 degrees Celsius and you refill it with water while it's above that temperature, it will explode and it will explode with a larger force than TNT. So make sure that you have your water source next to your boiler within the same chunk to make sure that nothing gets unloaded. If for some reason your boiler is running and not getting a source of water, it can be catastrophic at a later point. Keep in mind that the higher temperature your boiler gets, the more steam it will be outputting per tick. If your boiler isn't supporting your dynamos at a lower temperature, it will probably support them at a higher temperature. If for some reason your steam boiler isn't outputting enough steam, or that your fluid duct just simply cannot keep up with the amount of steam required, you can take a wrench and set the fluid duct to an output mode. If you give it a redstone signal, it'll then forcefully extract the steam from the boiler and should increase the rate at which it's pulling the steam out. Here I have laid out some of the important thermal expansion machines that you'll probably be using at some point in the future. A redstone furnace acts as a regular furnace, but much more efficiently. A pulverizer can pulverize most ores into two dust, doubling your metal output. A sawmill turns logs into planks and yields sawdust that you can turn into extra charcoal. Induction smelters can be used to make advanced materials such as hardened glass. Magma crucibles can melt some materials into liquid state and the fluid transposer will place the fluid into objects. And the aqueous accumulator can create an endless water supply as long as it's surrounded by water. There are four kinds of engines added by Thermal Expansion 3 called dynamos and these replace the old engines previously added by Railcraft, Buildcraft, and Forestry. The reactant dynamo requires a solid and liquid fuel and can be the most efficient if you have an abundance of nether stars and energized glowstone. The steam dynamo is what we'll primarily be using mostly because it's easily fueled. The magmatic dynamo can run on lava or blazing pyrothium if you wish to forgo the steam power, however keep in mind that lava pumps and another do run out after some time and are not truly infinite. The compression dynamo can run on liquid fuels such as oil and ethanol, but they require water for cooling. These are useful for higher tier gameplay when liquid fuels are plentiful. Each dynamo will produce 80 redstone flux per tick, or RF per tick, and the only difference is how fast they can consume their fuel. Once you have your dynamos made, you'll need cable in order to send the power to your machines. There are three different kinds of cable, the first being the leadstone energy conduits, which can only support one dynamo. Hardened leadstone is a little improved with five dynamos, and the classic redstone energy conduits can support 125 dynamos and are by far the most efficient. Any extra dynamos that you place on your conduit past their limit are wasted and will not be producing any energy. Starting off, you can power a steam dynamo directly by filling it with water and coal. Here I have an aqueous accumulator filling the dynamo with water while I have an item translocator moving coal into it from a chest. Once you have more than four steam dynamos, it's more efficient to pump steam into them from a boiler. A max size high pressure boiler at its maximum temperature can support around 20 dynamos. Part of making a high pressure boiler involves using steel. The best way to make steel is with an induction smelter. Here I have an example of a pulverizer pulverizing iron and putting it into a furnace. The furnace sends the iron into the nearby induction smelter, while a separate pulverizer turns coal into pulverized coal and places it in the adjacent slot. The induction smelter turns the iron and pulverized coal into steel. 
this setup is not required in order to make the infinite energy, however I just wanted to show off the automation features of thermal expansion machines. Here you can see by changing the colors on the sides of the machine, I can change the input and output faces of it. That's all on how to create infinite power with steam dynamos and thermal expansion basics. In my next video I'll be going over how to remotely send out power and receive items with a Cori without having to set up any kind of remote machine other than the Cori itself. If you have any questions feel free to comment below and don't forget to rate and subscribe.